The Kingdom of Bahrain's speech during the UNGA delivered on behalf of His Majesty the King by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister emphasized the importance of developing the UN and its agencies to face all challenges. The very systems designed to uphold the international order are under strain. Eighty years after its formation, as the threats and challenges we collectively face evolve, this important institution, which our global community relies on to safeguard the international rules-based order, must evolve as well. The Kingdom of Bahrain firmly believes that the reform of nations is based on peace and security. The Kingdom joined the United Nations in September 1971. However, the system is facing severe pressures in light of the geopolitical changes. This is precisely what the Kingdom of Bahrain's speech delivered on behalf of His Majesty the King by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister during the general debate of the 79th session of the UNGA emphasized the importance of developing and supporting this institution through the solidarity of states, which is the main reason why the Kingdom of Bahrain's speech emphasized the importance of the development and support of this institution. We support the calls for reform of the United Nations to ensure that it reflects current geopolitical realities so that it is equipped to continue carrying out its important global mandate for decades to come. This reform should be holistic, consensus-driven, and encompass all the decision-making bodies of the United Nations, including the UN Security Council. Based on the Kingdom of Bahrain's affirmation of the importance of the existence of the United Nations and its various bodies, the Kingdom of Bahrain renewed its support for the reform of this international entity so that it is able to achieve its goals and aspirations and face various difficulties in light of the long history between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Nations, which has been a vital partner in developing and implementing international policies and regulations and an active member of many United Nations bodies in supporting of international peacekeeping efforts. And to speak more about a Bahrain speech during this session of the UNGA, Bahrain's permanent representative to the UN in New York, Ambassador Jamal al rouayi made the following statement. The speech by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister comes at a time when the United Nations is facing uh, major and different challenges as a result of the current uh, geopolitical circumstances. Reform has become necessary to address these challenges. Uh, there are four, His Royal Highness called in his speech at the General Assembly for uh, reform to be holistic and uh, consensus driven so that the UN can fulfill its mandate of maintaining international peace and security. The support for the reform in the speech was clear and uh, direct to all UN bodies, including the Security Council. This was uh, contained in the Pact of the Future that was recently, recently adopted. This also reflects the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain and of the leadership of His Majesty the King to support the UN in promoting peace, stability and sustainable development around the world.
Prime Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, participated in the joint ministerial meeting between the GCC foreign ministers and China. Qatar's Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Sultan Saad Al Murayhi, who currently presides over the GCC ministerial council, chaired the GCC side, while China's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Wang Yi, chaired the Chinese delegation, with the participation of the GCC Secretary General, Jasim Al Boudaoui. The meeting discussed ways to enhance the long-standing cooperation between the GCC and China and explored opportunities for strengthening cooperation at all levels. They also addressed regional and international developments, including the situation in Gaza and the efforts to secure a permanent ceasefire and advance peace in the Middle East. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Ben Rashid Al Zayani, also participated in the joint ministerial meeting between GCC foreign ministers and countries of South America and the Caribbean. The meeting focused on enhancing the historical ties between the GCC and those countries. All sides explored avenues for cooperation in economic, commercial, investment, and development fields with the aim of strengthening the partnership and serving their common interests. The ministers addressed regional and international developments particularly the situation in the Middle East, including the conflict in Gaza. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Zayani, also participated in an emergency joint ministerial meeting between the Arab League and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. The meeting was chaired by Saudi Arabia's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Chairman of the Joint Arab Islamic Committee, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud. The minister addressed the significant challenges facing the Arab region, particularly the ongoing conflict in Gaza. He warned of the growing risks of regional escalation that could threaten international peace and security. The minister urged for an immediate and permanent ceasefire, the protection of civilians and civilian property, the release of hostages and detainees, and the facilitation of humanitarian aid delivery. He stressed the importance of supporting the UN Secretary General's efforts and enhancing the UN role in maintaining international peace and security. He also called for directing efforts to strengthen communication between the Arab League and the OIC with the UN, the Security Council and specialized organizations, international organizations. The minister noted the importance of implementing Security Council Resolution 1701 regarding the situation in Lebanon, Resolution 27 735 based on the U.S. President's initiative, Resolution 2720 on the expansion of humanitarian aid access to Gaza and the General Assembly Resolution calling for Israel to end its illegal presence in the occupied Palestinian territories. The meeting also discussed the coordination between Arab and Islamic countries on diplomatic action in the upcoming phase to support the rights of the Palestinian people. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Dr. Abdel Latif Al Zayani, met with Mauritania's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Cooperation and Mauritanians Abroad, Mohamed Salem Weld Marzoug, discussed were the strong relations between Bahrain and Mauritania and ways to enhance cooperation, coordination, and mutual consultation to serve the interests of both countries and their peoples, as well as their shared objectives. They also addressed regional developments, including the conflict in Gaza and Arab and international efforts aimed at achieving a permanent ceasefire and protecting civilians and civilian property. The meeting touched on the efforts of the Joint Arab Islamic Committee alongside topics of common interests. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Zayani, met with Syria's Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates, Bassam al Sabah. Dr. Zayani congratulated al Sabah on his appointment as Syria's Foreign Minister, wishing him success in his role. He reaffirmed Bahrain's commitment to strengthening cooperation and the distinguished historical relations between the two countries to serve their common interests and objectives. The Syrian minister emphasized his commitment to developing the strong ties between Bahrain and Syria for the benefit of both nations. The meeting also covered regional developments, including the war in Gaza and the Arab and international efforts aimed at achieving a permanent ceasefire there and more efforts for a just and comprehensive peace in the region. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Zayani, met with the Director General of the WHO, Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. The two sides discussed cooperation between Bahrain and the WHO, as well as ways to benefit from its expertise in implementing projects and supporting development plans for member states. They reviewed the initiative launched by His Majesty the King, adopted at the Arab Summit in Bahrain last May, which focuses on providing health services to those affected by conflicts in the region. Cooperation between Bahrain and the WHO to implement this initiative were also discussed. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Ablatif Ben Rashid Al Zayani, met with the President of the 79th session of the UN General Assembly, Philemon Young. Dr. Zayani congratulated Mr. Young on assuming the presidency of this General Assembly and wished him success in managing its work to achieve the UN's goals of promoting sustainable development and strengthening global security, stability, and prosperity. The meeting covered topics on the UNGA agenda with discussions on addressing global challenges. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Zayani, met with the former President of the United Nations General Assembly, Vuk Jeremik. They discussed topics on the General Assembly's agenda, as well as the current challenges facing countries around the world. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed Ben Mubarak Bendena, stressed the importance of constructive global action to achieve tangible results on protecting humans and the environments from the effects of desertification. The Minister made the remarks in his speech at the Road to Riyadh meeting organized by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the UN Convention to Combat Desertification, or the UNCCD Secretariat, on the sidelines of of this session of the UN General Assembly. He praised the efforts made by Saudi Arabia and the UNCCD Secretariat for their leadership in these important endeavors. The minister emphasized the need to achieve climate justice through the commitment of developed countries to support developing countries in adapting to and mitigating the effects of climate change, noting that increased financial assistance and technology transfer are necessary to implement national projects and initiatives adopted by developing countries. The second deputy chairman of the Shura Council and chairwoman of the Parliamentary Network of Women Parliamentarians in Africa and the Arab world, Dr. Jihad Abdullah Al Fadl, emphasized the significance of Bahraini women's participation in international parliamentary forums as a showcase of Bahrain's commitment to supporting and empowering women. During a meeting in Malabu, Equatorial Guinea, she highlighted the network's efforts to forge international partnerships aimed at enhancing women's roles in political life. Dr. Al-Fadl said that the meeting reflects a collective dedication to improving women's presence and participation across political, economic and social spheres. The second deputy chairman of the Shura Council, Dr. Jihad Abdullah Al Fadl, emphasized Bahrain's commitment to enhancing cooperation with various countries and organizations to tackle contemporary challenges influencing sustainable development. She highlighted the role of parliamentary diplomacy, in parallel with official diplomacy, to fulfill the aspirations of nations for peace and prosperity. During her participation in a parliamentary consultative meeting in Guinea, Dr. Al-Fadl noted the significant involvement of Bahraini women in international parliamentary forums, showcasing Bahrain's model for supporting and empowering women. This model has gained international recognition, largely due to the vision of His Majesty the King, with a follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister and the support of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, who leads efforts in promoting women's rights and participation in political life.
The parliamentary division delegation concluded its participation in the meeting of the Standing Committee for Social and Cultural Affairs of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly, APA, chaired by the Vice President of APA, Ahmed Sabah Al Saloum, held in the Russian capital, Moscow. The delegation presented two draft resolutions, one on promoting women's empowerment and gender equality in Asia. The other is a draft parliamentary resolution on promoting the alliance of civilizations and interfaith dialogue in Asia. On the sidelines of the participation, the parliamentary division delegation emphasized that such participation contributes to strengthening the Kingdom of Bahrain's position regionally. It also contributes to the exchange of expertise and experiences in terms of democratic practices in various Arab countries, which contributes to the empowerment of the outputs of the legislative authority. A number of Bahraini company owners and Bahraini employees praise the role played by Temkin in developing employment paths and supporting Bahraini companies. We have more in this report. The various support programs provided by Temkin to private sector companies in the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the guidance of the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Temkin, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, have achieved the desired goal of providing the largest number of quality job opportunities for Bahraini citizens. Bahraini companies that benefited from the support programs, 32,000 Bahraini citizens, praise the quality of the programs provided in supporting the wages of new employees, in addition to the career development programs that have become a tributary for companies in making Bahraini citizens the best choice in employment and career development. About 7,090 Bahraini institutions benefited from the support packages provided by Temkin, which work to support private sector companies through joint grants, financing facilities, and support for emerging and existing institutions, all of which contributed to the national economy of the Kingdom of Bahrain effectively. Slip disc ailment is a common condition characterized by the deterioration of spinal discs, often due to aging, injuries or poor posture. Treatment options vary based on the severity of the condition. However, advancement in medical technology have introduced modern non-surgical treatments that utilize sound waves. We have more in this report. A slip disc occurs when the softer inner material of a spinal disc pushes through a tear in the tougher outer layer, potentially compressing nearby nerves and causing pain, numbness, or weakness in the back, legs, or arms. This condition often leads to difficulty sitting or standing for extended periods and may be accompanied by pain in the hands or legs. Initial treatment is generally conservative and may include medication, physical therapy with customized exercises, and possibly epidural injections for inflammation relief. If these methods do not provide relief after several weeks, surgical options may be considered with minimally invasive procedures for severe cases. Recent advancements in treatment include acoustic wave therapy, a non-invasive method that uses sound waves to promote healing and tissue regeneration without surgery or anesthesia. This therapy aims to realign the spine and enhance recovery at the cellular level.